It's been more than just it's been just more than a week since a months old affair and cover up between representative Cindy Gamrat and Todd Corser were unveiled to the public. Well, tonight the salacious story took one more turn with the former staffer stepping in front of the cameras. 24 hour news a political reporter Rick Albert is here now with what if any new information came out of today's event, Rick? Well, it's much like Friday's event with representative Gamrat. Today's appearance by the former staffer Joshua Klein did a little to look, to explain if this is only a matter of a marital infidelity or something potentially more serious from a legal standpoint. I am here to set the record straight. With that, a man who said he was a longtime friend of Todd Corser's began to explain how that relationship started to deteriorate after Corser's election to the State House last year. From the beginning, Corser has been a source of media interest and Republican ire, once appearing to be considering a run for speaker, almost unheard of as a freshman, to complaining about something as commonplace as seat assignment, Corser did not endear himself to many of his colleagues. The revelation that he and Gamrat were having an affair has led to calls for their resignation or removal. Both say that they will stay, and it appears that they will, for now. Klein vowed to set the record straight, but because of an ongoing investigation, shed very little new light on what actually happened. Rather, he told of his observations of an inappropriate relationship between the representatives and his disappointment in the way he was treated by his old friend, Corser. From my first day in office, Mr. Corser adopted a rather disrespectful and almost haughty approach with me and other staffers. His attitude became ever more elitist and arrogant. The most poignant example I can remember or recall happened at a staff meeting in early January, where Mr. Corser told us his staff, let's get it straight, boys. We're not here to pass legislation. We're here for messaging moments in media. Now, I know people think there are a lot of questions, but perhaps the only real question that remains on the case of the two representatives arriving in Lansing to change the system is how long they'll be able to remain in that system and what, if any, impact they can have as representatives. Nothing the former staffer said today suggests either misuse staff or funds to cover up the affair, which is the more serious from a legal standpoint. Uh, well, the, it's one question not likely to be answered, however, until after the House investigation is complete. We talked about that last hour. We don't know when that's going to be. This could right. go on for a while. I know there are a lot of folks in the House uh, that are coming back tomorrow. They may even come up with a Rhodes deal sometime this week to prove that they can concentrate on the important stuff. Right. But this is still going to be lingering. And I think one of the things that they would like to see in the House is for this to be over sooner rather than later. That's a wish I don't think that's going to come. Is there anyone else out there? that will come forward any more staffers well there are two on. other staffers we think may have at least some knowledge and we don't know who else could come forward and we don't know what if anything they can can shed in the way of information on this and right now everybody who comes forward only comes forward to say i can't say anything about the investigation right. so they're talking but they're not saying a lot yeah all right thank you Rick. you bet